My name is Anthony Bash. I'm the Vice Master and Senior Tutor at Hatfield. So a number of you will know me, uh, but, but those of you who are not Hatfielders will know who I am. I can prove I'm a Hatfielder because I've got the Hatfield time. <clears throat> My wife said when I first prepared this seminar, what can you teach them about doing exams? They haven't stopped doing exams uh, over the last 10 years or more. It's at least 25 years since you last took an exam. In fact, it's a lot more than 25 years. So in some senses, you're far more experienced than me about how to plan your revision, how to do your revision, and how to prepare for exams. Nevertheless, I think that over the years I've acquired some life skills which might be helpful and because I work so much with students I also understand the sorts of issues that a number of you will face. And it's often said that no man is a hero to his wife and I'm most definitely not a hero to my wife. My defence is this. My defence is this, that I have just learnt from my own mistakes uh, and I've learnt from others' mistakes and I've learnt a lot from uh, the good things that other people do. How do you stay on top, which is the first part of this uh, seminar? Well, this sounds ridiculously simple, but draw up a plan. That's step number one. Work out what you've got to do work out how you can do it uh, and make sure that the plan is both realistic and attainable. You might have heard the term anal and it means a sort of person who does lots of lists and lots of plans and is very methodical and very ordered. Well, you need to be with exams. It's no need, uh, there's no place to be sketchy and creative and clever and think, oh, it will fall into place. Very often it doesn't. So the key, the most important thing, is a realistic plan and an attainable plan. So for goodness sake, don't sort of plan 14 hours work a day. You won't be able to do it. Nobody can do it. Build in buffer zones. Uh, they're very important. They're they're sort of spaces when you're not working, when you're not studying, and for when things go wrong. So suppose, for example, you um, do come in, and you have a cold, and you can't work for two days. You need to have spare time and spare space in your plan for that sort of contingency. Um, you need to remember that you cannot learn everything. You just can't do it. So you can't revise for a whole course. It's very un it's, at least it's very unlikely you'll be able to do that. Um, and remember that the aim is excellence, not perfection. Um, so you, you want to do your best, you want to be your best, but you'll never be perfect. No student, or almost no student, gets 100% in an exam. You can with some language papers, and with some science papers, and some maths papers, but basically, for the majority of us, a mark of 75% is stunningly good. I can say this, I'm being recorded, so I'm, I'm, I'm a bit embarrassed. I once got 93% in a finals Hebrew paper. That was really good. Um, so I was lucky. But that's, that's very rare. When you're revising, and I probably sound like your mother or your father, eat regular meals. Terribly important. So have breakfast, have lunch, have dinner, and maybe even snacks. Um, but I advise you not to have biscuits while you revise. Because if you do, you'll go like that. 
You just eat regular meals. You have drinks. Have breaks for drinks. Um, I do the housework at home. We're slightly off the subject of revision, but the principle holds good. I do the housework because my wife, A, hates doing housework, and B, has a bad back, and every time she vacuums, she really screws up her back. So I do the housework. That's my job on a Saturday. And uh, what I do is I give myself treats. So after I've done the ground floor, I think, right, I can have a treat now. So I take 10 minutes off. And then when I've done the middle floor, right, middle floor's done, I can have a treat, and so on. And it's the same principle with exams. You think, I'll do this task, and then I'll stop and, and have a treat. I don't think I've put this in this presentation, but don't be like one of my kids who revises with his computer on, with, with Facebook, and Skype, and Twitter, and his phone's on, and the maximum span of concentration at, ever one, at, at any one point is about three microseconds between checking Facebook, Twitter, or whatever. So, so really try to make a special time for revision. Again, I sound like mother, try and get seven hours sleep a night as a minimum. It's really no good working till 3 a.m. and starting work next morning at 7. Even the human body, said he very hypocritically, who rarely gets it, the human body needs seven hours sleep. And you probably therefore need to be in bed for seven and a half hours, at least, in order to get to sleep. Um, when you're younger, you usually need longer than seven hours, so maybe eight or nine, but you, you have to schedule sleep in. It's really, really important. Um, take regular exercise. Absolutely. Simple advice. Now, you don't need to join a gym, you don't need to work out for two hours, but walk. I mean, walking is a brilliant form of exercise. Um, so I've walked into work today, that's a mile and a quarter. I did go to the gym before work, that was 35 minutes. I then had an appointment in Collingwood today, so I walked to Collingwood and back. And then this afternoon I have an appointment at Mount Joy, so I shall walk all the way up Carly and Kill and back. And then probably at the end of end of ah tonight at eleven o'clock I'm, I'm with the police touring central Durham, so I'll, I'll probably walk with the police. And then unless they give me a lift home in a car with, with blue lights, which I really hope they do, um, I'll probably have to walk home. And, and that's how you stay feeling good. You, you just feel great after exercise. You feel great. Um, keep regular hours very important for revision again. Uh, go out, have a great time, but don't get back at two in the morning fasted. Uh, and maintain <coughs> a social life. Don't cut yourself off, um, see friends, see films, go out. If you must, go to Clint. Why anybody goes is a mystery to me, but you know, have a great life. So maintain your social life, keep a balance, but make sure you stick to your plan for work. Any questions, observations? Come on. Uh, ah, people laugh at me in the college, they think I'm a killjoy, but alcohol really does affect your ability to concentrate, your ability to revise, and, and your sense of well-being. Um, I suggest you lower your alcohol intake significantly during the revision and exam period, and you'll feel the better for it. You'll also store up calories, uh, you'll store up spare calories. I haven't expressed that very well, but alcohol has lots of dead calories in it. Um, it's quite high in calories. So if you're not drinking so much, you can have some biscuits while you revise, you know, becoming a balloon. Um, You'll all laugh, but the weekly recommended alcohol intake for a man is 21 units, for a woman it's 14 units. That's actually not very much. I think a bottle of wine is 9 units. So for a man, no more than 2 bottles of wine a week, for a woman, roughly 1 bottle a week. So a glass a day for a woman, 2 glasses a day for a man. I, I don't know how much a pint of beer is. 2 units? 
we don't know. Find out. But, but do, do stick to the limits. Um, coffee uh, is a stimulant. It will stop you sleeping. It might give you irregular heartbeats. It won't help you. So have a cut-off time for coffee, probably 6 o'clock at night. And after that, uh, uh, drink other soft drinks. Um, avoid things like Red Bull and other stimulants, because they really won't do you any good. You probably think I'm just like your parents, and I'm very sorry. Um, you probably all know the, uh, the hare and the tortoise story. Um, and there was a race with the hare and the tortoise, and the one who ran, who, the one who, who won was the tortoise, because he just plodded along. Um, there are some sick-making people, uh, and I'd like to meet them so I can give them a good kicking. There are sick-making people who really can do all the revision for a module in two days and get 87%. You and I are not like that. We're not the hares, and most people aren't. And being a plodder is the key to success. Just drip, drip, drip. Let the work go in and remember it, rather than cramming it at the last minute. So I really urge you, be consistent. Start revising now. You won't forget it. It will all be there somewhere in your mind. And of course, revision is revision, not vision. And then you do revision, and then re-revision, and then re-re-revision. -re and it will stick. Um, I always tell people it's, it makes them sick. I, I've got two first degrees. My first, deg my first, first degree is in law, and I made every mistake you could. Um, I crowned. I, I did all right, but I could have done a lot better had I worked properly. In my thirties, I did a second first degree in theology. And at that stage, I'd already had a career and wasn't bothered with the result, and was, was doing the second and first degree from pleasure because I was really interested in the subject. Um, and so I just absorbed it throughout the year, learned it throughout the year. Uh, and as a result, I did much better because I made it part of my, my life rather than just thinking, oh, these awful exams, I've got a crown for them. So, so try and I mean, start revision now. You will do very well if you can do that. As I've said, it ought to be revision, not vision. Um, start early, don't cram. On the day of the exam, absolutely stupid to revise. Just, just don't do it. Because all that will happen is, at the forefront of your mind will be what you just revised and all the stuff that you actually really know will be much harder to um, mine and get to. And again, you might be sick when you hear this, but when I did my finals for my second first degree, uh, I was in Glasgow at the time, and uh, I used to go swimming in the morning before the exam, so I'd have a nice swim, and then there was a wimpy bar uh, in Byers Road in Glasgow. The place in Glasgow and I used to go and have a wimpy, and chips, and an orange juice for breakfast after my swim. And it was lovely. I'd sit there and I'd, I'd just relax. I'd chill out. And I then had a 9.30 exam. And it was incomparably the better way to turn up for exams. I was rested. I had exercise. I had a good breakfast. And my brain wasn't jumbled with all the stuff I'd just revised. Um, as I've said, take, take regular breaks. Don't use food to cope. It is important that you don't just mush them out. You know. um, work throughout the day. So get up early, but remember to go to bed correspondingly earlier. Um, again, I probably make you sick. I'm, I'm a morning person. So I do all my best work in the mornings. I do six impossible things before breakfast. That's a quote from Alice in Wonderland. Um, but I think most people's brains are at their best in the morning if they've had a reasonably early night and if they're not 
thick-headed through having drunk too much. So that's the best time. And that way, you can take the time off in the evening to socialise, but go to bed early. Um, I, I, I pinched all this from, from the web. I, I don't know how true it is. Um, I'm going to talk about types of learning styles. Research shows that people are a combination of all these types of learning styles. And the best thing to do when you revise is not to think, for example, oh, I'm a visual learner, but, but to think I can learn in lots of different ways and in order for the material to get in, I'm going to use all the various ways to learn. So there's a, a visual learning style um, where ideas, concepts, data, and other information are associated with images and techniques. Um, so you can use for that things like flashcards, uh, revision notes, and mind maps. I teach um, Greek, I teach New Testament Greek, and I really urge the students to use flashcards to learn their, their paradigms for nouns and verbs. Personally, I think it's the only way to do it. Um, and it's a very important way to learn. Or, oh sorry, here's how to create a mind map. Um, I don't find mind maps very helpful. Uh, do any of you find them helpful? Any of you use them? Yes, I just just can't do it. No, I think it's a bit missing in my brain. Um, do you want to talk about mind maps? Um, How they've helped you? Yeah, I, do I just do like a lecture as a mind map. So right. each lecture is one or two mind maps. And you can really see the concepts quite clearly. And then kind of they branch out and you, you, get, you can like go deeper if there's one Yes. I used to teach law and I, I, I gave the student mind map, the students mind maps for complicated legal questions. But on the whole I don't find them useful. So so here's a mind map. You you start with the central idea and then you think nobody's perfect. So then you think don't focus on perfection. So I can I can tidy up later rather than now and live with an untidy room. Um, and if you do that, then your ideas will explode because you've made space mentally, because you're not worrying about tidying up, and so on. So it's just worth a try. Then there's what's called kinesthetic learning, which is a preference for carrying out activities rather than listening or watching. So um, science students tend to learn a lot by kinesthetic learning because they have problems classes and labs. Um, and you could also do old exam papers. Well, they used to freak me out. Old exam, I mean, I never looked at old exam papers because I'd look at them and think, oh, I can't do anything. I don't understand anything. I'll never do that. Um, I'd also like to add that to, to sit around for long periods won't help. Um, your blood pressure will drop, if you're like me. Your feet will go cold. Um, you'll have a sore bottom, probably. And you'll be itchy and sort of restless. So it's, it's inadvisable to sit for long periods. Um, I would get up every half hour, have a cup of tea, go to the toilet, um, have, a, have a five minute break. It's much more productive than long periods of concentrated work. It is said that the, the optimum concentration span is 12 minutes. Um, I, I think it's a bit longer for me. It's much longer for me. But the idea of a, a 55-minute lecture is ridiculous. Uh, if you don't give people a chance to have a, have a change of gear in the lecture, they, they won't take it in. 55 minutes. And then thirdly, there's auditory learning, um, learning through listening. Um, again, that doesn't help me. I'm not very good at 
that sort of thing. I think my wife would say I'm pretty good at listening generally, but I don't learn through listening. Um, I'm not really sure how I learn to do this, uh, but some people find it helpful to recall their work or to listen to lectures, uh, download stuff from uh, YouTube to help them learn or, or whatever. And as I've said, although the theory of learning styles is in widespread use, there's no evidence that identi identifying a student's learning style produces better outcomes, or that people will learn best if taught in their preferred style. Rather, all the, res all the research shows that students appear to, to benefit most from drawing on a variety of learning styles. And that's what I'd urge you to do. Just think, what are the different ways I can learn this material? Some very obvious points about exams. I uh, set exam papers, I mark exam papers. Some very obvious points. Examiners don't want to fail you. There is no truth in the room that they're out to get you. I teach, uh, I teach a module and a half. I want my students to do well. I'm desperate for them to succeed. And if, if I can give them a mark for something, I love doing it. So we're not sadists. We're really not. However, you don't get marks for what you don't know. So if you don't know, there are no marks. And you don't get marks if you don't answer the question. Uh, there's no point answering the question you've revised for, and there's no point answering the question uh, that you think they ought to have asked. I teach a module called Introduction to the New Testament, and I just, year on year, I read students vomiting onto the paper everything they've learnt about the two source documentary hypothesis, which is a and it comes up every year, always with fundamental to the course. But every year I ask the question in such a way that they can't vomit up my lecture notes. And every year they vomit up their lecture notes. Um, so read the question, answer the question. Um, the question will never say, tell us everything you know about, and then you, you give the examiner that. It will always have a twist. And part of what the examiner is looking for is your ability to handle the material and to shape it for the question. Now, I'm speaking principally about art students, obviously. I'm not really au fait with the sciences, but I suspect the principle is the same. There are no questions in maths. Give us the nine times table. It requires you to apply what you know and adapt it to the question. Also, uh, you don't get marks for material you make up. It's just obvious, really. Never, and you should never say never, but never exceed the time allocated for a question unless you have spare time at the end of the exam as a whole. Um, it, it's like this, you get most of your marks in the first half of the time allocated to the question. And the, the, the second half of the time is if you like the cream on the cake. If you know your stuff, you'll, you'll get comfortably a 2-1 verging on a, sorry, a 2-2 verging on a 2-1 within the first half of your time. And it's the extra time where you push your answer up to your, your top level. But to add on time after that is, is, is really very difficult. If I were scientific, the sort of curve, or the graph, you'd start down here. So in the first part of the question, you get lots of marks, and then after that, it tails off. So the number of extra marks you'll get 
in extra time on the question which you've stolen from another question just isn't worth it. It's really not worth it. It's a mug's game to exceed the time. Um, is, uh, is, is what I said clear? Do you understand what I mean? Okay. Drink water during the exam. Stay hydrated. Um, terribly important. Don't be an idiot and cheat. Just, just don't do it. Just don't go there. It's a no-no. Um, you'll be expelled from the university if you do, and it's just not worth it. Um, and cheating, you wouldn't, you wouldn't be able to cheat very effectively to get many marks. It's just not worth it. We had here some years ago an honesty box, which welfare did. Uh, in a, an honesty week. I can't quite remember it. Um, and, and people were invited to put something that they'd never told somebody else in the honesty box in the Porter's Lodge. And some things were very moving. There was one student who wrote, I cheated in my GCSE maths exam. And the student was clearly deeply ashamed and upset. And I think uh, he or she probably felt they shouldn't be at this university because they got in by false pretenses. And something like that can really mess with people's consciences. At least have the conscience that you got where you got by your own ability, not by cheating. Um, personally, I think last minute cramming never works. All I can remember is what I've just crammed. So, a bit like um, in Harry Potter, sort of broaden your minds, em em empty your minds uh, immediately before the exam. All the stuff will be there inside, and then you can, you can mine the stuff when you need it. Um, a student showed me her blog once, uh, and the next four slides are a slightly adapted version of her blog, and I think it's really good. You need to stop revising if you're feeling stressed, panicked, or constantly tired. You need to stop if work invades your dreams and the majority of your waking life. You need to stop if the quality of your work is going downhill the more you do. And you need to stop if you're snappy, irritable, and can't tolerate being interrupted. And you need to stop if you're home senseless. But just say, it's a bad day. Go and do 50 press-ups, have a run, go for a swim, uh, walk in the botanic gardens, walk by the river, do anything but not work. There really is a point when you say, this is just a waste of time, this is counterproductive, this will screw me up. You don't need to stop if your level of stress, panic or tiredness is the same as always. So if you're always stress, panicked and tired, bad luck. You, you have to keep going, that's who you are. You don't need to stop if you naturally think about work a lot. You don't need to stop uh, if the quality of your work is going downhill because you aren't putting in enough consistent work. You, you, you will need to catch up rather than give up. Uh, you don't need to stop if your natural style of work requires peace and quiet. And you haven't got it. You've just got to press on. And you don't need to stop if boredom would, would not improve if you took a break. So if you, if you hate doing applied Sanskrit uh, and there isn't anything that can make you enjoy doing it, then um, you just have to keep going. Don't stop if you're bored with it now, you were bored with it last week, you were bored with the lectures, you were bored with the assignments, you just hate the subject. Bad luck. OK? 
Okay. How long should you stop for? Well, ideally, until your stress levels are decreased and stay decreased and you feel refreshed. And that's where exercise is so important. I don't mean running marathon, but light exercise releases endorphins. And my wife, who's a clinical psychologist, says that uh, moderate exercise does most people more good than taking antidepressants. I mean, that, that is the most astonishing fact. It's, it's uh, evidence-based. That's an evidence-based statement. If you take moderate exercise every day, people do more good than antidepressants. Now, there are some people who are seriously ill and need to take antidepressants, but for most people who just are bored out of their minds with their work and depressed, because they're bored out of it, because they're bored out of their minds. Light exercise will do you far more good than alcohol or antidepressants. Um, so stop ideally until you feel refreshed or as long as you feel able to stop within time constraints. So don't take three days off, in other words. We're talking of hours or half days. Not, not days or several days. Um, stop until the topic seems interesting again. Uh, again, you have to be careful and sensible. And if you're learning um, applied Sanskrit, it's probably never going to be terribly interesting. But stop until it seems a little less uninteresting than earlier. And ideally stop until you just feel more relaxed about work. And again, I can't stress enough, moderate exercise is just a great way of um, feeling good. You can also give yourself treats if you like, for example, say something like Breaking Bad or um, thinking what my son is watching. Um, what's that thing with Urka? Francis it's, it's a current American series, a remake. It's a big political thing with the president. House of Cards. House of Cards, that's it. Um, you, know, you can <coughs> I could have a, an episode of House of Cards House of Cards a day. Or an episode of um, uh, Game of Thrones a day. Something like that. Um, The last one the student said is how to stop. Very important now how to stop. Put down your work, put away the books, clear your desk, and close the documents on your computer. Very important. So the first thing you see when you wake up is not your desk with um, applied Sanskrit. If you're not too mind-numbingly brain dead tired, tidy your room and all your house. But, but don't tidy your room as an excuse for not working. Just think, right, I've done my work, I'm going to tidy my room. I can open the window, I can vacuum it, dust it, tidy my paper clips, put them all in size order or whatever. Uh, make lists about things you have to do or, or plan further to organise your work. Something else the student found very helpful is write down your worries if necessary. But don't think about them or imagine worst case scenarios. I'm worried I won't learn applied Sanskrit in time for the exam in three months' time. Do something you enjoy, really important. And put on your favourite music, but not so as to, to disturb others. M music is a wonderful escape. I, I don't need to tell you. You listen to something that makes you feel good. Not something that will lower your mood, but something that will raise it. Three last points. Be realistic. Reset 
is not the end of the world. Life does go on. Winston Churchill said this, and I often quote it to students, success is never final, failure is never fatal, what counts is the courage to go on. I think that's an absolutely brilliant statement. Success is never final, you're only as good as your last success. Failure is never fatal. Just look at politicians who are disaster, they resign. Peter Mandelson came back three times, despite being somewhat doubtful at times of being recorded, so I need to be careful what I say. But, you know, you always come back. There's the comeback kid. Success is never final. Failure is never fatal. What counts is the courage to go on. And I once met somebody who said exams are as much a test of character as a test of ability. Do you have the resilience of character and the maturity to plan your work, to sit your exams, to face failure, to do a reset, perhaps even to face longer term failure? And if you've got a mature character that can integrate all these things into your life, you will be a better person. You may not get the degree you want or a degree at all, but actually you will be well served by life and well able to serve life. Now, almost everybody gets a degree and gets a good degree, so don't think I'm sort of in despair for you, but, but it's not the end of the world not to get the results you want. And lastly, now we've eight minutes. That clock's slow. That's very annoying. We have a few minutes for questions or for you to add to this presentation. I can change it, improve it, shorten it. Any experience you've had where you think, oh, you ought to have said that and you'd make it a better talk. And he's completely wrong on that. Yes. Uh, I suppose on the sort of the cramming point, uh, I certainly my teacher told me, I'm, I wouldn't say the opposite of the advice, but certainly told us there was quite a lot of research to say that you learn best um, the more the, the closer it gets to the exam. So on the day, perhaps you could do something structured but towards the exam instead of sort of blanking it out completely. Well, that's interesting. That's a very helpful um, other viewpoint. Uh, how do you others feel? What's your experience? Does cramming help? thing to say. So there are some whose learning style is not like mine. I, mean, I need to be careful not to sell my learning style as the way. Thank you very much. <laughs>